I've never done anything like this before. It feels weird. So should I say like, hey guys, like how do I start? Hey guys, Paranormies is sponsored by Farmery. Paranormies is sponsored by Farmery now. No, now sponsored. Just cracking beers back here. <laughs> Paranormies is now sponsored by Farmeries. Guys, if you live in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, or Alberta. Why you say skies? Huh? Why'd you say skies? What? I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. It's now sponsored by Farmeries, guys. No, I did not say that. I promise you, and I'm putting it in the video. <laughs> That's not it. Round two. No, okay, I'll do it again because you fuck, you fuck me over on that one. Paranormies is now sponsored by Farmery. Guys, if you live in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, or Alberta, pick some of these up over the summer. They're great. They have all kinds of crazy drinks. Oh, and what the hell was that? I have no. What was that? Oh, I need to crack this thing already. They got crazy awesome summer drinks. Gotcha. Enjoy the video. <laughs> if anybody's coming, like, oh man, it's just freaky. It's like, it's like something. Like, oh, graveyards, man. Peter, <laughs> is that your name? Yeah. Whoa. What kind of vehicle are you driving? Whoa. Whoa. When that door shut, it freaked me out at first because. I had already been getting like really good responses on the audio list. After asking the spirit at Union Point Church over and over again what its name was, it finally gave us a name through our ovulus, not once but twice. It said Peter. After releasing the episode and informing our source Renee of our findings, she was able to look in her history book and confirm that the man who died in a blizzard at Union Point Church was in fact named Peter Rajitnig. This was an amazing confirmation of our findings, and knowing this, we couldn't wait to go back and try to make further contact with him, at least knowing his name. During our first investigation of Union Point Church, almost immediately after sitting down and talking to Peter before I even knew his name, I was getting very pertinent and very specific responses from the ovulus as to the circumstances of his death. We are extremely hopeful that we can talk to him again to gather more information about this man and his untimely horrible demise. We went into this investigation extremely confident that we could have legitimate conversations with Peter and other residents of Union Point that have not passed on. This time we were equipped with specific knowledge about him and other key former residents of the town. Hey, didn't we see a bear the night we were doing the dialogue for this? That's the night. Was that we the night? That was the night when we saw the bear. Really? Yeah. That's a weird coincidence. For like, anybody that doesn't know, when we filmed dialogue, we filmed about 40 minutes away and on our way back from filming dialogue for this one, we saw a bear in the yeah. Marchand bar parking lot. We tried ch chasing it down with the car. Yeah. So that's a little bit weird. Dan. Dan? Yeah. I s what was that? What? I swear, like, I heard something over here. Like, almost like something sliding. Really? Yeah. Peter? Did you hear that? I was three, three knots.
You nutter. What is you it? nutter? What? What the hell does that mean? It says, it says you're a light. nutter. Huh? Grab, grab a light. Oh, man. Here, I got a flashlight. What does this mean? You nutter. I have no idea. Is that just gibberish or is that like above? above. It said above. Remember we heard like Yeah, we heard noises. There's something from... in there. Shine it up there. We didn't get a whole lot of activity on the early part of the night, but one really weird thing that happened was that we were hearing all kinds of noises up in the ceiling and after we heard some knocking in the entrance the word above came through the ovulus and we took it as that something might have wanted us to go up into the bell tower. Well, Remember it sounded like somebody was like it sounded like somebody was on the roof before. Yeah. Well, let's get inside because I it's probably making our mind. It wants go us crazy. to go above. There's no chance. Well, we can't get up in there either. Could you imagine? That was clear. Now it's going nuts. Sadness, yeah, now it's really sadness. picking up. Yeah, sadness if if you passed away here, right? Yeah. Is that what you're feeling? Are you feeling sadness? We didn't feel like we were able to contact Peter on this particular night because we weren't getting any of the same type of responses that might indicate we were speaking with the same spirit as last time. So we decided to move on to try to contact the second of three spirits that we came to talk to on this particular night. And the second of three spirits was Alexander Jackson. Our first investigation here, a name came through our ovulus, which turned out to be one of the best responses we've ever gotten. The name Jackson came through, which seemed insignificant at the time, until we visited the graveyard next to the church to conclude our investigation, and saw the name Jackson on three separate gravestones in a cemetery of only roughly 25 stones. Jackson is a very common name across North America, but in our corner of Manitoba, it's extremely uncommon. We looked into the history books and found information about a man named Alexander Jackson, who was among the first to settle Union Point. Alex Jackson was originally from Perth, Ontario, and after working on the Canadian Railways for many years, all the way from Ontario to the Rocky Mountains in British Columbia, he married his wife Alice in Richmond, Ontario in 1888. The Jacksons then made their way to Union Point, Manitoba in late 1889, where they began to farm the surrounding land. They had six children named Elizabeth, James, George, Harriet, Mary, and Mabel. Alex and Alice Jackson celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary at Union Point Church and lived in Union Point until they died. The Jackson family is now buried in the cemetery outside of Union Point Church. That was loud, baby. That was really loud, twice. I mean, it, you can tell it is windy. It sounds like something's in this corner. Yeah. SLS? Oh, buddy. If you're in that corner, Peter, let us know now. Because we're about to see you if you are. Do you hear something? Yeah, I think it's my imagination on that one. Shine a flashlight there. What about the window? Is it picking anything up in the window this time? No. No? No. Here, hold this for a sec. I don't. Pass me the flash. Don't. Right? Not picking anything up this time. Picking you up. What about by the door? Holy oh, shit, I thought I saw something in that window. That window. Did you hear that? Uh huh. That was definitely a knock from that window. That's like the hugest area I've ever seen at autofocus. What's going on here? Oh, dude, never mind. Wow. Oh, it's okay. So it is picking up that big thing. So that obviously, for some reason, it picks that up. That is weird that it's not picking up that window again. Oh, that was shit. me. That was me. Oh, my goodness. It scared <laughs> me.
Okay, let's, I'm going to try and recreate. Oh my God, there it is. He's there. He's right in there between. He is. Peter, if that's you, can you make a noise from that door? That's where the knocking was coming. Yeah. And I'm gone. Gone. That's insane, dude. That was me. Why did it say Africa? You think that He's sometimes totally they, just, they just give you nonsense words just to mess with you? Just mess with like, mess I can't mess. make it. What the hell? Notice. Well, we did notice you. It's not doing it at all. Oh, no. It's, it's auto focusing like by the pew. You got anything over there? No. No? Here? No. Seeing the figure in the front entrance between the two doors was probably one of the craziest things that we caught on the SLS camera ever. Um, and that's mostly because that's where all the activity was coming the first night that we, stay, uh, we were at the Union Point Church. And it's also where most of the activity was coming the second time as well. I just felt the building stop. move. Can you tell us how old you were when you died into the device in Jordan's hand? Anyone okay. from the Jackson family, can you tell me why you're still here? Are you looking after the farmlands? Listen back. Mm -hmm. All right. Here. I didn't get anything on the key too. I just thought the building moved. Right after that, you feel the building move too? That's when it was. Did you hear that? What was that? Was that just. That, was that I don't just know. Weird? That could Can you tell us how old you were when you died into the device in Jordan's hand? I just thought the building moved. I just thought the building moved. In the wrong spot? No, there, there it was. Is. What is that? What is that? No, no. Sounds like something's sliding on the floor. Sounds like something like, like a shoe on like a yeah. basketball court. The night seemed to change when we began to try to contact the third spirit of the night. Looking further through the history book, we found an interesting story about a Union Point resident named Jack Krevchenko. Jack was convicted of murdering a bank manager in Plum Coulee, Manitoba in 1913. After he was convicted, he escaped his jail cell, most likely because his lawyer, a man named Percy Hagel, smuggled a rope and pistol in during a visit. However, his escape was short-lived. He was captured shortly after and hanged in Winnipeg on July 9th, 1914. We wanted to know more about Jack, so we decided to try to contact him or somebody that might know him. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do a split where you go in the dark here. You and, want me to go in yeah, the dark Or here? me, I don't care who, and uh, one of the other person's going in the outhouse. Okay, well you can go in the outhouse. I, uh, yeah, I want to go straight darkness. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, let's go. You have the K2 meter? Yeah, the K2, yeah. Okay, I'm going to... Let's put in there. Go, yeah, no kidding.
Okay. Get that going. And I shut the light off. I never know how to shut this light off. That's not that one. Okay, here we go. Alright, I'm I wanna to talk to a guy or I wanna know more about a guy named Jack Kravchenkov. Heard that he murdered somebody not too far from here. And he was from Union Point. And the device next to me. Can you say something? Can you tell? Tell me who you are, or if you're here, or if you knew him. Is there anybody in here with me? I honestly don't know who we've been talking to tonight or who's causing this activity because you really haven't given us much verbal communication with the Oculus or anything. But I want to know if, it, if this is Jack or if this is Peter, if it's one of the Jacksons, just let me know. Just talking to the device next to me. Evil? Pete? Starting to hear like knocks and noises all around me again. Very quiet, but I can definitely hear them. Heard a scream of some sort. That's you, Jack. Or Pete. Or the Jacksons. Please make yourself clear. Is that Jack? Who is that? Oh god! Holy shit! Oh my god! Okay. Fuck this dude. Oh, the door. My god. Is that Jack? Who is that? Oh god, holy shit. Oh my god. Okay. Fuck this dude. Oh my god, so funny. Die! Fuck. Oh my god, he's fucking locked in. Open it! Dude, the fucking the fucking tripod just came flying at me. It was locked! Why were you locked in? That was fucking... Dude, come here, come here. You gotta get in here.
Tell me the bang. Right. Oh my god. Drill it. Jesus Christ. You locked? Was I locked in there? It was locked. How are you locked in? I was sitting there in the dark and I heard the door start creaking open behind me and I thought that Johnny may have just been walking back into the church but when I turned around I didn't see him which was already that was terrifying enough but when the tripod just came flying at me that was that was sheer I just felt sheer terror in that moment and if you watch the footage again you will see our K2 meter, which is, it's leaned up against our light on the, on the stage or whatever of the church. It falls over after the tripod flies, comes flying at me, and after I take a few steps back. So I can't explain that by just like me stepping on the ground, by the vibrations. It seems like something actually pushed it over after after I already started walking away. When I was in the outhouse doing a spirit box session, I heard something going on inside the church. So I quickly stopped the spirit box just to listen and hear what was going on. And shortly after that, Jordan was outside the outhouse yelling my name, which freaked me out. But then I realized that I was locked in the bathroom. I tried breaking out of there. And I personally thought that it was possible that the wind would have knocked the little wooden lock down. But Jordan said that it was super hard to unlock it, so then I was really unsure what was going on. The tripod. <coughs> I was sitting here, right there, and the tripod just came flying. I heard the door open. Okay. The door opened a little bit. I was looking at it, and then I heard the tripod move, and then it just, it, just, it just flew at me while I was sitting right here. <laughs> Put the K2 next to it. I gotta see that, man. Uh, I'll show you, I caught it on the camera. You fucking sound terrified, man. I am, I've, I've never seen anything like I that. Think for, I wonder if that locked me in from the wind. Wow, how the wind knock you I don't know, just like, not like just flip that thing. Like, that's the first time something has actually like come at me like that. Really? That. I'm freaking out now, dude. It's like you want to get going? Or are you fine if we just do like one or two more, like a sensory deprivation? I want to okay. see that. Let me see that for okay. a sec. Oh my god, dude! Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would have bailed too. That is fucking crazy. Uh -huh. Wait, I want to see me too. It's locked. It was. I didn't even realize. Like I was just. I didn't even understand why you couldn't get out. That's fucking crazy. That's fucked. Oh my. Now what? Now what? I don't Sensor know. Sensor deprivation? I gotta keep it going. That is crazy. Did you drop the key too? It looked like it got pulled out of your hand. I, I, it fell. I didn't drop it. It just... It fell? It, it fell, yeah. I, Oh shit. I pretty freaked out. Yeah. Don't really want to do this right now, but why? I I don't want to be like sensory deprived after something just like came flying at me. Whatever, we'll do it and see what happens. At least if something happens, you don't know what's happening. <clears throat> this 
So I want to try and talk to Peter or Jack or any of the Jacksons. Whoa, that was a really weird low voice. Is that one of you guys? Can you be more clear? I see you. Yeah, I just was hearing something over here. Use his energy. Touch Don't him. Don't start. Don't start. Why? Hearing rattling at the door. Look up. Look up. What, what, what is with up? Why do you keep saying up? I keep hearing rattling. Like it is coming from upstairs. Victoria? Oh my god. What is going on? Holy shit. Grab that light. Oh my god. Okay, if that's you, stop for a little bit. Holy shit. Oh man, I just, hang on. I just need to get my bearings straight, man. That is crazy. To sit down, my legs are shaking, my knees hurt. I feel like I've, I don't know, I don't really want to sit down in case I gotta like move, you know? Holy smokes, man. It's so crazy because I kept hearing rattling coming from this area the whole time. Really? Yeah. I wasn't hearing a whole lot. Like on the sphere box? Yeah. What, you, everything you were saying sounded really freaky to me. With the, like what I was asking. Uh huh. It wasn't really like it wasn't really like answering back. It was just saying things like. I remember saying thing. look up. Yeah, and right yeah. when you said that, I heard like it sounded like something was rattling over here or up in there. It's like, I swear there's something in there. You know what I mean? Like how? Maybe you shouldn't go back in. That might be a bad idea. Is there anything in there? No, it's still just static. While Jordan was in his sensory deprivation, I heard movement kind of all over the place, but wasn't really too worried about it, except for the same rattling that I was hearing from the door um, pretty much the entire time it just every now and then it would draw my attention to it just hearing rattling from it sounded like the door was moving back and forth on the door frame when I was in the sensory deprivation I didn't really get a whole lot I wasn't hearing a lot on the spirit box but like suddenly I just like heard a loud commotion in the front and immediately I just jumped up and I took I took the headphones out and I saw Johnny running towards me I was running towards Jordan because I heard like three loud knocks which we had heard a couple other knocks that sounded similar during the night, but these ones were really loud and they were coming from the front door. And immediately after that, I told Jordan to grab the light to come see what was going on here. And then we heard a huge bang that almost sounded like somebody was kicking one of the pews. That last banging sound was the last of the activity that we caught that night but we did sit around for another hour afterwards just to take a listen, but after we got nothing, we decided just to pack it up and call it a night. This was an interesting experience because it was in direct contrast to what happened the first time we visited Union Point Church. The first time we got plenty of communication on the ovulus and not a lot of physical movement around the church, but this time, almost no ovulus communication and a lot of physical movement. This leads us to believe that we were not in contact with the spirit of Peter this time around. The Jacksons also seemed to be absent, 
but something seemed to be really angry when we tried to contact the spirit of Jack, the convicted killer from Union Point. We personally don't think that the angry spirit was Jack because he didn't die in Union Point and his crime took place in Plum Coulee, but rather something was mad that we were bringing his name up, especially in a church. Union Point Church has become one of our favorite places to investigate, not only for the paranormal activity inside of it, but also because of its huge part of Manitoba's history that most have forgotten about. We're proud to be from here and extremely happy to show many thousands of people a glimpse into our part of the world, a part of the world they would most likely see if it hadn't been for us.